Yeah, so today we're focusing on At Your Command, um, a study guide by Neville Goddard. And, you know, At Your Command really is a beautiful reminder of how to have faith in yourself, um, how to be conscious of your thoughts and what's happening within, because ultimately our thoughts are creating our life here on this physical plane on earth. And it's a reminder that if your life is not congruent with what you desire, um, you have the ability to change it. You have the ability to imagine a better life and create a better life for yourself. And if your outside world is not congruent with your want, that's okay because everything is possible, right? We don't have to limit ourselves nor do we have to dwell and focus on what we don't have in life, right? At Your Command really shows you how you can become more. And again, these are the practices that I'm implementing. And today I wanted to talk about At Your Command, how it's impacted me, um, experiences that I've learned, um, things that I've come across with other people. And again, sharing how we as a collective can elevate ourselves through using our imagination and understanding that our gifts lie within. And if our outside world is not appearing the way we want it to appear at any point in time, we can change it. So it looks the way we want it to look. And throughout this reading with Neville Goddard, there were a few quotes that I came across that I found resonated with me. And I really wanted to expand on and touch upon and have this discussion today. You know, so the first quote that I noticed that came across was, you know, stop asking yourself whether you are worthy or unworthy to receive that in which you desire. You, as man, did not create the desire. Your desires are ever fashioned within you because of what you now claim yourself to be. Now, uh, the reason I really like this quote is because, you know, so many of us, we have a multitude of wishes and desires. You know, we desire that job or the title, the promotion, or even a better, healthier, happier relationship, right? And the list goes on. But oftentimes, you know, we are not patient enough to see those things come to fruition, right? You know, we get anxious, we get worried because things are not necessarily working out the way we want, and we're not seeing the results that we want. So we start to almost doubt and question, are we worthy of having, having these desires, you know, are these desires truly meant for me? Am I being overambitious, you know? And what we have to realize is, you know, whether or not you're prepared for the role or whether or not it feels like this desire is right for you, we have to stay in the wish fulfilled because we have the potential to derail ourselves when we feel like we are not worthy of these desires. You know, we have to remember that, you know, in order for us to achieve our desired state, we have to rise in a level of consciousness that aligns with our desires. We have to be one with those desires, right? So rather than suppressing them and focusing on when are they going to manifest and how long will it take and am I truly worthy of this? You know, we have to have faith and trust that these desires will come true despite the fact that they may not be happening as quickly as we want to, or despite the fact that what we see in our outside world, the messages that we get from people, the current situation that we're in, it's not reflecting our desires. You know, we have this desire, but nothing in our external world reflects this desire. We still want to stay in alignment with it. We don't want to start tapping into limited beliefs, doubts, fears that tell us, okay, well, perhaps we're not worthy of this desire. You know, I remember working with people who wanted to shift from, you know, corporate and working with the company to shifting into entrepreneurship. And they would say, I would love to do something like that, but I don't think I could do it, but I would love to. And in their statement alone, you can hear the desire, the passion. But at the same time, they looked at the current situation. They said, I can't understand where to begin, how to start it, and maybe I'm not good enough to do it. And those are the limited beliefs that we need to be aware of. We need to be aware of when we're talking ourselves out of situations, right? The goal here, like Neville is saying, is rather than suppressing those desires, focus on what you want instead of focusing on what is going wrong. Have faith and trust that these desires will come true, despite the fact that they may not be happening as quickly as you'd like them to be. 
you know, Neville Goddard said the key is staying with our desired state and maintaining the wish fulfilled, right? When we stay with our desired state and we maintain the wish fulfilled, we fashion our desires to the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And what that does is creates this bond. It creates a synergy and it allows the desire to take form, right? And the mere fact that we have to remember the mere fact that we have this desire indicates that we are worthy. You know, the all is one and the universe is mental. We are aligned with infinite intelligence. We are aligned with the Christ itself, right? The part is in the whole and the whole is in the part. We are all connected. And once we have this knowingness that I am part of the divine intelligence, I am part of the Christ itself, I am part of a higher feeling, then I know that if I'm receiving this desire, the desire is meant for me. And that knowingness alone is enough for us to be worthy and stand firm because it's indicating that you are worthy. The desire is here for you so you can align with your higher self and you can share that with the collective. And that vibration will increase and help other people as you move forward in your journey, right? But in order to bring our desires to fruition, we have to keep limited beliefs doubts, fears, and indecisions at bay, right? We have to remember like whether you desire a new position, whether it's entrepreneurship, um, whether it's elevating, you know, your current work position, um, whatever your desire is, it's just understanding that the desire has chosen you as much as you've chosen that desire. And when you look at it that from that perspective, it really may allows you to focus on it like, wow, okay, it's not that I'm just have this desire and an interest, but the interest is also aligning with me. We are meeting halfway. So it's just remember that in order to achieve your desire, you have to attain the feeling of the wish fulfilled, right? And know that fears, doubts, and limited beliefs, they're going to tell you that you can't achieve your desire, right? And they have the ability to paralyze you and derail you from achieving your desire. But if you stay and maintain that feeling, you'll be able to move closer to what you truly want. You know, Neville says, man has always decreed that which has appeared in his world and is today decreeing that which is appearing in his world and should continue to do so as long as man is conscious of being man. Not one thing has ever appeared in man's world, but what man decreed it should be. Right? There is nothing in your world that is appearing that you do not decree. You have a say in it. You know, one of the most important lessons that I've learned is that the power lies within us, right? Everything you believe deep down inside of yourself, you manifest into your reality, meaning the outside world doesn't shape you. The challenges you see, the obstacles you see, the things that you might hinder you, they do not shape you, but you shape your outside world, right? There's a tendency for us to say, I see this roadblock, therefore I cannot do this. I can't see the finish line, therefore this must not be for me. I don't see the people and places and circumstances to help me, therefore I probably cannot do this, right? We must understand that our world is incredibly malleable, which means that either we're creating from limited beliefs, fears, doubts, and limitations, and those will mold and shape our reality, or we create from a place of courage, bravery, and belief, the belief that I can. Therefore, it's crucial for us to analyze what's happening on a conscious and subconscious level. Paying attention to the words we use. Our words carry vibration. They carry a vibrational frequency. So what you decree, I can do this or I can't, will be reflected in your reality. You know, what we decree isn't necessarily what we want, but rather what we feel at a subconscious level at times, right? So we may want our lives to look a certain way, but our fears would tell us maybe that we're not ready or maybe that we're not worthy. So we end up telling ourselves, I am not worthy. We end up telling others, I don't think I can do this. I can't take this venture. I can't leave this relationship. I can't have my desires. But by doing that, at a subconscious level, we impress it on a subconscious level. We also articulate it with our words. So we're carrying that vibration. And then we allow this fear and doubt to take root. And that grows into our reality. And then we experience this in our reality. And then we tell ourselves, well, of course, we can't do it. Because our reality is confirming it. 
right? We have to remember your words and your thoughts and your beliefs are incredibly powerful. And this is what Neville is alluding to, right? They are the catalyst of change. But they are also the one thing that can keep you where you are. Therefore, so in order for us to change our external reality and manifest what we truly desire, we have to start to believe that the power is within. You know, the first thing we need to do is examine your outer world. When you look at out your outer world, pay attention. What do you say to others? When you speak and you're speaking with conviction, what are the words you're saying? You know, what is your truth? Are you expressing fears? I don't think I'm able to do this. I think this will be too difficult. I've thought about it. I'd really love to, but I can't. It's subtle sometimes. It's unintentional, but it tells us at a subconscious level where we're at. And it shows us why I may want something, but deep down at an unconscious, subconscious level, I don't believe that I'm worthy enough. Therefore, I really don't believe that I can. So it's a matter of us of taking inventory of the things that we say to ourselves, right? Analyzing internally and pinpointing where there's a mismatch between my desire and my belief. And once I can identify those things, I want to start going in and changing those things, changing the limited beliefs, doubts, fears, and limitations so they start to align with my true beliefs that align with my desires and my higher self. And as we take inventory, we have to pay attention to ourselves and what we say, but we also have to pay attention to the influence that come from the external world. You know, Neville says, if any man should ever come saying, look here or look there, Believe them not, for the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you, meaning you are the answer. You are the key. You are aligned with the higher self, with the Christ itself, with infinite intelligence, with source, with the universe, however one wants to phrase it. You know, it's not about looking at it necessarily from a religious perspective, but it's knowing that you are higher connection. You are part of a higher connection, you know? But the problem is we've been taught that true happiness comes from what we attain in this material world. You know, so whether it's the fancy things, the job, the title, the more money that we make, it seems that we've been told this is the way to do things. And it feels as though that everyone around us has subscribed to this belief that happiness is achieved by what you attain. And this is part of the issue, right? From an early age, as early as I can remember, you know, someone has always dictated what you should do for happiness and what you shouldn't do for happiness. You know, we've been told that there is a version of success and in order for us to attain it, we must follow this formula. And this is the formula a lot of us follow because when we obtain success, we get praise and validation and there's happiness. So we feel as though this is the way to do things. So we look outside of ourselves and move outside of ourselves in order to obtain this happiness. The truth is we need to find our own direction, right? It's about tapping into our own intuition and listening to our inner voice and following our heart and our core desires, right? It's about aligning with the true self and identifying what these external influences are that are trying to lead us astray and understanding that these external things are not in vibrational match for what's really true for us. And it's about pulling away from the things that are not in vibrational match and aligning with the things that are in a true match for us. And when you align with yourself internally, you tap into your internal GPS, right? It's not about where everyone else is telling you to go, but it's aligning with where you are meant to go and where you're being guided and what's meant for you. And I know that when I was constantly looking out outside of myself and I was constantly chasing, I felt like I was on this hamster wheel. And truly there was an emptiness inside, but I was trying to fill it with more things, more form because I did believe that they would bring me happiness. Now, this is not to say that having material things is a bad thing. I do believe that having material things will allow you to live a more comfortable life. But I do feel that if we lead solely on material things because we think that the material things we obtain will make us happy, you shouldn't be surprised that when you get those things, there's still a void. And you're constantly trying to fill it with more things, whether it's substance, whether it's people, whether it's relationships. You're looking outside yourself to fill an emptiness that resides within. I believe that true power, true authentic power is going within. As Neville said, if any man should come saying, look here or look there, believe them not for the kingdom of God is within you. The power, authentic power res resides within us. And it's a matter of us looking within. And once we do that, our external world will start to change.
And again, that is the idea. When we align with ourselves, we tap into our internal GPS, right? And then it's not about where everyone is telling us to go, but it's really about where we're meant to go and where we're being guided to go, right? But the key is we need to take time for ourselves, take time to meditate, take time to sit with ourselves and fully understand our desires. You know, ask yourself for direction in life. You know, where am I meant to go? Where, where am I being guided to go? Right. But really take the time to listen to your intuition, listen to your inner voice, because it will lead you to the path that's aligned with your desires and what's meant for you. But when we're constantly distracted, when we're constantly on the go, when we're constantly consuming things, we're constantly chasing things, when we're constantly acquiring things, we're not taking enough time for self. These are distraction oftentimes. And I understand that meditation can be challenging for a lot of us, but maybe it's not meditation for you, but it's finding a way to connect with yourself and hear yourself because you're, because this is the true guidance that you require. The beauty in At Your Command is that Neville also states that if your outside world is not congruent with your desires, it's a map, it's a roadmap showing you what you need to work on. So at any point in time, we can change it. You know, as he's quoted, if you are dissatisfied with your present expression in life, the only way to change it is to take your attention away from that which seems so real to you and rise in consciousness to that which you desire to be, right? Our journey to our desired state can be a bumpy ride, right? For many of us, we're in jobs that we don't like or careers that don't offer the growth that we want or relationships that are not serving us deep down. And we know that there's more to life than this. You know, you know, the issue is when we're in it, it's hard to see clearly. You know, it's like we're viewing life through these foggy glasses, which has fears, doubts, and limitations. And it seems so real, right? Because we give so much attention to them. And then we align with these feelings. And then whether we realize it or not, they're producing in our outside world. But what we have to understand is, you know, when we feed into them, they grow, they come to life, you know, and that's what causes us to be stuck. And that's what stunts our growth, right? That's clouding our judgment. These things are clouding our judgment. So whether positive, or negative, we have to remember that your energy flows where your attention goes. And when you understand this, you can understand that it's really about attaching yourself from what you're seeing that's not in alignment with what you want. If we fixate on it, our energy will go there. And if our energy aligns with negativity, we will produce negativity in our outside world, right? But if we shift our focus away from these doubts, fears, and limitations, and we align them with our desires, we'll notice that what we start to experience in our life is congruent with our desires. But what we really have to do is pay attention to what's distracting you. Yes, there may be some negativity, but as it's energy, we can see it for what it is, observe it, and allow it to flow and allow the positive feelings, the desires that we want to come in instead of resisting them. We can replace these negative thoughts with positive thoughts, feelings that align with and are congruent with our desires. You know, we could take personal inventory. What is taking you out of flow? What is taking you out of your alignment and making note of these things, these situations, these occurrences, these events, these people are starting to take me out of alignment. They're starting to lower my frequency. And that's a great starting place for us to start to shift and start to remove those things that are really pulling us in a direction that we don't want to be in. You know, when we're out of flow, it's easy for frustration to kick in. It's easy to get disrupted. It's easy to get distracted. And it creates space for fear and limited beliefs to settle in. So instead of focusing our attention on those things, it's really about focus on it's really about focusing on what's in alignment with what you truly desire. Right? There is a tendency oftentimes for us to focus on the negativity. We see the negativity, it's in plain sight. So we ruminate on it and we fixate on it and we get frustrated on it. And as Neville said, if you are dissatisfied with your present expression in life, the only way to change it is to take your attention away from that which seems so real to you and rise in consciousness to that which you desire to be, right? And it's really about shifting your attention and energy from one thing to another, moving from a low vibrational state to a higher vibrational state, moving from the undesired state to the desirable state. And shifting from the undesirable state to the desirable state is knowing that the desirable state is always available to us. There's a low frequency state that is aligned with the false self. There's a higher frequency state, which is aligned with the higher self, the true self. 
But we have to recognize at any point we can shift from one state of polarity to the other state of polarity. As Neville said, you cannot serve two masters. Therefore, to take your attention from one state of consciousness and place it upon another is to die to one and live to the other. The moment that we release the negative state, the false state, we become empowered and we move to the state that's aligned with the higher self. And that is what allows us to move forward. If we carry feelings of positive and negative, what we create, what we project in our reality will mirror what we hold within. If we impress positive and negative feelings, we will express positive and negative feelings. But if we to die to one, die to the limited beliefs, the fears, doubts, the indecisions, the low frequency vibrations of the false self, and we rise and we take on the high frequency of the Christ itself, the created self, the true self, we will always manifest that what we put our energy into, right? So the challenge for many of us is despite our good intentions and wishes and our desires, if we have fear, doubt, and insecurity, those fears, doubts, and insecurities will produce in our outside world. They will keep us frozen and they will keep us in place and they'll prevent us from obtaining what we truly want in life. You know, the reality is for many of us, we create from a place of fear because it breeds a false sense of security, right? So we'll often talk ourselves out of following the path that we really want. You know, we'll stay in the job that we don't like or the career that's not going where we want it to go or the relationship that's not serving us, you know? And oftentimes there's a comfort that comes with it. There's a familiarity. We know what the outcome will be. You know, we can stay face to it. We don't have to try something and fail at it. We know where we are. Everyone knows where we're at. So there's a familiarity. There's a comfort there. There's a safety there as well. There's a reward for staying where you are. But we have to understand that because it's a false sense of security and the foundation is fear and scarcity and doubt, we are creating more fear, scarcity, and doubt in that job, in that relationship, or whatever it is that we're manifesting in the world. The process of achieving your desires is identifying the fear and knowing that we have to replace those fears, release the grip that we have on those fears so we can align with our desires. It's also knowing that we ha can't have one foot in and one foot out. Because if, again, if fear and positivity and negativity are the foundation of our beliefs, then this is what we will create in our outside world. You know, you can never be in want of proof or lack of evidence of that which you're aware of being. This being true, why not become aware of being great, God-loving, wealthy, healthy, in all the attributes that you admire? You know, we have a choice. And at any point in time, we can see ourselves as lack and scarcity and not having enough. Or we could see ourselves being that in which we desire here and now, present state. I am what I desire to be, and I see myself in that state rather than seeing ourselves as lacking. You know, our limited beliefs are like a piece of gum stuck on your shoe. You know, it's incredibly hard to shake off, you know, and everyone experienced this lack and fear. And for many of us, our reality can be shaped by these limited beliefs, these doubts, these insecurities, which only end us holding us back from what we truly want. You know, to see our desires come to fruition means creating from that state that we truly desire. So we have to shed light on our limited beliefs and we have to start making space for what we truly desire to come in. As Neville said, we have to be aware of being great and being God loving and being wealthy and being healthy and all the attributes that we admire. Now, I understand this is easier said than done at times. There's a lot of doubt uh, when it comes to creating from this space. And there's no guilt or shame around this. This is the discussion that I think is great to have openly because we've been conditioned and programmed to believe that we don't have this power, that we don't have this authentic power, that it doesn't reside within us. So most of us are going out and changing and feeling burnt out, overwhelmed and overworked and dissatisfied, but we're still doing the day-to-day -day things to keep our lives going because we have responsibilities. But we speculate, we question, we have doubts. And it's about knowing that when you have those doubts, they manifest into your world and it creates this vicious cycle. You know, as Neville Goddard said, speculation is proof that you have not attained to the naturalness of being the thing you desire and so are filled with doubts. Right. You know, the moment we start to doubt is the moment our desires freeze in time. And again, as I said, there's no guilt or shame around this. 
It's more about observing and acknowledging that this is where we are. And because this is where I'm at, I do have doubts. And because I have doubts, they are being impressed on my subconscious and unconscious. And because they are being impressed, I will experience it in my reality. And when I experience it in my reality, it will confirm my beliefs. And this is the cycle and it continues and continues. A huge part of this is to believe and have unwavering belief in what you truly desire. You know, if we truly believe that we can attain everything we want, then we won't find ourselves questioning and speculating when it's coming or where it's coming or how it's coming or how our desires will manifest or why is it taking so long because we'll notice that it's happening. The key component that we have to remember is that when we allow ourselves to be consumed with when is this manifestation going to come in and how is it going to come in, we lose sight of our desire and we lose sight of the belief that's required to put this into form. But when we detach ourselves from the speculation, you know, the formula is easy. It's about maintaining the feeling of the wish fulfilled plus detaching yourself from the outcome or the wish. And that's going to equal belief and trust. But by holding on to the outcome and gripping on to when it's going to come and speculating, that's how we give birth to doubt and fear, right? We need to get to a place where you relinquish the need to control, the need to know, and get to a place where you have faith in your desire. And that's how we create flow in our life. That's how we allow things to come to us. When we live from that space, there's a peace and there's an ease that comes to life. When I believe that I am being guided, so because something is not happening on my agenda, on my schedule, it is okay because things are in an incubation period and they need to take time to take form. And that's the beautiful thing about it. So I'm not worried because I know I'm being guided. And if it's not ready yet, then there may be lessons that I need to learn. There may be things I need to grow on. There may be skill sets I need to work on. Maybe I need to go back and focus on the skill set, soft skills, hard skills that can allow me to make this transition. Maybe I need to work on my inner growth so I can align with the right partner. And that is the beautiful thing about truly aligning with this work. And that is the beautiful thing about aligning with your desire, but also having this unwavering faith that it's going to come to you when you're ready. But when you are constantly pushing and we want things to happen on our agenda because we're consumed by this construct and this paradigm of time and things need to happen within a timely fashion. And when they don't happen according to your agenda, we start to allow fear, doubt, insecurities to bleed in. And soon as we allow them to bleed in, we have to understand that we are now bringing that forth in our reality. So a huge part in this shift is removing that need to be in control, relinquishing the control, and allow things to happen when they're supposed to happen. As we do this, we release speculation. And as we release speculation, we allow things to flow naturally to us and come to us when they're ready. And this is how we move through life with more ease and more flow because we trust and we believe that what's meant for us will find us when we are also ready to receive it. You have not the present consciousness because of your world. On the contrary, your world is what it is because of your present consciousness. This statement from Neville is simple yet powerful. Uh, this is where the divide begins. If you believe that what you feel is a result of what you experience in the outside world, then you will blame and hold responsible your outside world for how you feel and what you experience. And your whole life will be spent trying to change the outside world. Now, if we believe that you are responsible for what you experience in your outside world and that what you impress unconsciously and subconsciously, what you imagine, how you vibrate, is what dictates what you experience because you are the creator, then you will know that you can change your outside world at any point in time. And what you see is nothing more than an illusion, right? You are the dreamer of your dream and the creator of your reality. So again, as simple as it sounds, we are in charge of how our lives play out. When you don't know this, you feel like you're constantly on the effect side of life 
constantly being pushed around, constantly trying to contort yourself to fix things, constantly chasing things, constantly going after things, feeling exhausted, but feeling like you're getting the short end of the stick because this is the life and this is the world that we live in. For those that know I create my reality, they know at any point in time I can change my reality. They know that yes, one way to change it is to by going out in the world and trying to change things. And that's one way of doing things, but that's more effortful. They know that the true way is to align with the divine self, the higher self, the Christ itself. When you align with that, you go inwards first. And when you go inwards, things change. As I said, the outside world is malleable. It will change in form to align with your vibration. It will change and take form to align with your imagination. It will change and take form to align with what you believe at an unconscious and subconscious level. And you will start to experience life with more ease and more flow. You know, it's about knowing that your external world does not dictate your reality. When you realize that, you realize you are the one who shapes your world. And that alone is incredibly empowering. And that's how we start to move forward. That's how we start to evolve. We begin to shed the fears and limited beliefs. So like a snake sheds its skin, we're shedding all the negativity that's been holding us back and we're stepping into our true power. And that's how we begin to manifest the things that we truly want in our life. And again, this will, but this is going to require us to trust our inner voice, trust the guidance and follow the path that's truly meant for us. You know, the only way to change your expression of life is to change your consciousness. Therefore, everything that we experience in our environment the people, the places, the opportunities, the fears, what we aspire to be, the doubts and limitations, these are all reflections of what's happening internally within us. These are examples of what we truly believe in. You know, but knowing this is power, this is true authentic power because it's empowering to know where we need to change things. When things are showing up in our outside world, that is a mirror reflection of what's happening within. So rather than changing the mirror or breaking the mirror or destroying the mirror, we take our intention inwards. And if we see fears, doubts, and limitations in our outside world, we go inwards to work on those fears, doubts, and limitations. If we see things that are congruent with what we desire, we continue to fuel and feed those things that are in alignment with what we desire. Again, as they say, you cannot put new wine into old bottles, meaning as you move in a higher vibration, as you align with your imagination, the things around you will change. If you change the way you look at the world, the world around you will change. You know, and you'll notice that you can observe fears, doubts, and limitations, and they can show you where you need to shift, where you need to change your frequency so you can be in alignment with what you want. But you don't allow those things, those tethers to hold you down. You release those sandbags in your life so the balloon can elevate. And this is the beauty of what we're doing. You can see fear and say, I no longer align with fear. I align with courage. You could see doubt and say, I no longer align with doubt, but I align with faith. And I believe that this information has the power to change people's lives. The way it's transformed my life, I move from a place of not knowing to a place of knowingness. And that knowingness has allowed me to transform my life and help transform others through coaching and sharing this information. You know, as the Kabbalion says, the all is one in the universe is mental. We are all connected. And information is not meant to be hoarded like many. It's meant to be circulated and shared. And as you evolve as a person, as a spirit, and you align with your higher self, as an act of service, your vibration and energy changes and you can now inspire others and others can inspire others and the collective will continue to grow. And that's what I'm trying to do with this information. Share it to those that need it, but also understanding that everyone is in a different place in their journey. And when they are ready to receive the information, the information will appear for them. Thank you. Feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. I appreciate the feedback as always. Thank you, Ray.